My name is Robert Bezo. I am the founder of Plastic Bottle Village in Bocas del Toro, Panama. Right now, we'd like to thank our friend Daniel Connell that came and helped us here in Bocas del Toro. We had a problem at the village with the signal of internet, and he came up and made some dish out of plywood and wire mesh and whatever, uh, whatever it was handy, and we now are able to catch our internet signal. So here at Plastic Bottle Village, what we're trying to do is to reuse plastic bottle from the island. We have a lot of tourists coming to the island, and each tourist drink one or two or three drinks per day, so we are we end up with over a million bottles a year on the island. We have no place to get rid of it. So I started to make build building we using plastic bottle village as you can see behind me. We are one year old. I started this project in August 2015. Uh, during that first year, we developed a system to be able to uh, do some sort of a Lego, Lego block. We're making a rebar cage, and inside that rebar cage, we have a wire mesh cage that we put inside, and we put the plastic bottle inside, and we are able to keep them trapped inside those cages and we attach those cages one to the other and finally weld them together to make a structure and that structure later would be covered with concrete a layer of concrete outside a layer of concrete inside you will not see the bottle because the bottles are trapped between the two skins of concrete they are using they are very useful because they become an insulator when the sun eat up the part of the cement the wall outside it cannot cross the seven inches of bottle, the air inside the bottle, and the inside wall is very cool, like 17 degrees difference from the inside and outside. So you don't need an air conditioner. The idea is to, uh, to build an international training center here in Bocas del Toro, where we could receive uh, candidate people from different parts of the world. Mostly we hope to get from developing countries which have a lot of bottles which need a lot of housing or shelters and we would like to train them to do to build the way we build we would like them to leave Bocas del Toro go back to their country and train other people and show other people how to get rid of these plastic bottles so the dish wasn't really something that was like a project itself. I was in New Zealand working on a greenhouse project uh, in the Kamau community where my father lives in a very remote part of New Zealand. And um, so we needed the internet to work on that project. So we borrowed this uh, mobile USB like internet dongle from a guy like uh, who lived there as well. And then like drove round the, the, the property with um, with like me leaning out the window of the car with like the dongle with like a, like a frying pan, like a wok as like um, as a reflector dish plugged into my laptop and managed to get like enough signal to see that like you know we could connect with a better reflector so then just drew up a, a, like a design for that in, in my CAD package and like um worked out that small cell chicken wire would be like you know would be a small enough mesh size to reflect the, the signal as a solid surface but all the all the cuts that we did with that first version we didn't think we had like a jigsaw so like all of all of those cuts were done with that which took like hours and like killed about four of us and then um like Pete the young guy who lived up the hill came in and was like oh you should have used our jigsaw that we've got at home like um we'll just lend that to you and like just yeah okay thanks for that that would have been really useful about four hours ago but um it worked really well we just chucked it on a five meter cable and like put it outside the, the common house leaning against the wall like pointed at a tree didn't bother to optimize it at all and we're getting like 100 kilobits per second through the thing um, and then sort of yeah patched that through my laptop into the rest of the into the rest of the, the building Wi-Fi wise and um, so I tested this I made uh, these in Spain um, I got four and a half kilometers range with line of sight just to some basic home network at the other end um, made them in Tibet in uh, in Ladakh in the high Himalayas um, a place called Sekmol we were gonna Build, beam like internet from Spatuk Monastery up to Sekmol down the end of some um, river valley which is like seven and a half kilometers with a dish at each end like we've got here um, and like taught the local guys how to how to make the dishes so they can make more of them 
because um, there was one guy who really wanted to do it because he had he lives like this really remote village but even by Ladakhi standards like super remote but they just built a cell phone tower um, which he thought would be visible like 40 kilometers away from the top of the mountain like above the village so the the plan was that it'd make like a couple for the village and then like put it up on the top of the mountain and like people going up and like you know taking the livestock up the mountain would take like, like a bag of phones put that in the dish feed the animals and stuff all the you know sms's and all that sort of stuff you know sends and receives grab the bag take it back down and, and, and hand everybody's phones out again um so yeah it's, i mean it wasn't meant to be a project in and of itself but it has been like really effective and it's gotten quite a lot of interest so we've uh, we've installed it here in panama to uh to bring internet to the panamanian jungle and so far that seems to be working out really well this is the dish that we've got up at the main house. Uh, it's got the router in the focus of it. Uh, and since this is over the back end of the house, um, anything that comes out the front of the router gets broadcast through the house so it doesn't get chopped by the dish. But the rest of the half of the signal just gets just spotlighted out towards the second house, which is about 300 meters that way. So this is the uh, dish that, the second dish that we made for the second plastic bottle house down here. So the dish is just made from some just standard normal plywood. It, I mean, it's jungle, so it's marine ply, so it doesn't, doesn't rot, but if it's not going to get wet, it doesn't need to be. Uh, we've got a small cell chicken wire in here, which is just standard chicken wire. And then just, uh, just cable ties, just zip ties. To, um, to pull that mesh tight to the, to the paraboloidal um, shape. So making these like these slats is super easy. Just you just mark out the box. There's the um, the full tutorial on on uh, the website, which the link is to in the description of the video. To get the parabolic curve, uh, I just um, as is sort of spelled out in the tutorial, just hang like a, a light chain of a fixed length between between two points, and that'll hang in a catenary curve, which at this kind of um, focus is about, is very, very similar to a parabola. So, and then you spray paint over over that chain, and then jigsaw out the, um, you know, the shadow that it, uh, that it leaves. And that's it, pretty much. So, both of these dishes um, took me about one day to make the to make the frame, but that's like an easy day, and then another easy day to get the the mesh. And there's a whole the, the cost of all of this is about twenty dollars per dish, I guess. Um, I mean less really because we already had the plywood on site. But if we bought it new, that's about what that would come to. The um, only other materials is two bits of string, which um, pull tight, and that's that's the focus. So the things like designs that. You know, it gives you the focus where the string meets, and that also gives you like a hard point to to mount your whatever on. So that the setup here would be having like an adapter like this, or like a phone or something, and then like a like a either like have if it was a phone broadcasted out through um, Wi-Fi tethering or or Bluetooth tethering, or a USB cable. You can get these up to five meters length before it starts to become like too long. Run that in through a window patch that into like a laptop or something and then patch that into the Wi-Fi card in the laptop and broadcast it out into the rest of the house so all those devices connect through that one laptop, through the dish, bam, um, through the air gap and then into the, the, the internet connection at the other end. So we're getting about um, 57 uh, decibels signal there which is very good for hundreds of meters of trees um, we're also picking up someone's phone I don't know who that is but they're a long way away whoever they are and then we've got good enough connection that you know can load Facebook pretty much as quickly as if this was like in the house with the router like the speed that that's going is pretty much the speed of the internet connection like because um, it's a little bit uh, dodgy into the top house as it is. So also having the main house broadcasting pretty much over the entire property means that as other houses get built here they'll be able to tap into that signal as well um, and basically just have like full high-speed broadband internet in the jungle in Panama and if we, if we can make it work here then theoretically it should work 
pretty much anywhere. Now come and see. We are building a castle. This castle has two levels plus a terrace on top. This castle will use about 30,000 bottles. 30,000 bottles that will for sure not go in the sea, will not be buried on this island, will be there for hundreds of years. This will be a barbecue. <laughs> this will be a little bar with a, with a toilet and it will be, the contour will be a crown made with panel with bottles just like you see there. It's unique, it's the only one in the world. We want to inspire people to have used their imagination and create all kinds of building. Nothing is impossible. We live in a plastic world. Humanity went through Stone Age, Ice Age, and now going through Plastic Age. It's a bigger problem than the two previous ones.